Hey guys, this is Claudia here from The Bookkeeping Experts. We're back for more education and QuickBooks Online. I've been a bookkeeper for over 20 years, also a VFO accountant and business consultant. So um, we're here to talk about a subject that people ask me over and over again, which is undeposited funds. While you're cleaning up the books, this may be one of the most um, challenging issues that you can find when you're cleaning up your books, okay? Especially if you have um, integrations or if you record your invoices through QuickBooks Online. All right, so we're going to talk about uh, one, one question that people come up to me over and over again is, Claudia, why do I need to send the payments to undeposited funds instead of just recording straight to the bank account? Okay, so first of all, what is undeposited funds? Undeposited funds is actually a transitory account. It's where you, where you record the payment before it was deposited into the bank. Um, if you take checks and if you when you deposit to the bank it's multiple checks, the only way for you to record everything into one deposit to match whatever happened in the bank is if you send to undeposit funds. That's one of the reasons. But there is one more reason or there's more reasons to that. <laughs> and the next reason is when you record your deposit going straight into the bank and you don't match in banking for whatever reason, you're duplicating your income. And there is absolutely no way for you to know unless you reconcile your account, then you're gonna be looking at two transactions for the same amount or similar amount. I have a client that when recorded the payment was recorded the payment for a different amount than what was deposited in the bank. So with that being said, um, and she was sending the deposit straight into the bank account. And when she saw the transaction coming in the bank, she would just um, record it as sales as well. So she was duplicating everything and not aware that that transaction was already recorded, right? The one thing that you need to make sure is that whenever you record a deposit or an expense uh, that is coming or going into your checking account, it needs to be the exact amount, the date, that it was actually um, recorded in your bank. Um, for a lot of my clients, they, they uh, just write an invoice, send to the client, and maybe add services without updating the invoice and receive the payment for that with a different amount than it was on the invoice and then they record the payment for whatever the invoice outstanding amount was. Uh, with that being said, this would never match whatever happened in the bank. So there is, there is a lack of understanding that whatever you record going into the checking account needs to match because you need to match in order not to duplicate any income or expense. So uh, we're going to go into QuickBooks Online. I talk a lot today. <laughs> okay, let's go straight into QuickBooks Online. Um, maximizing this page so you can see everything here. Uh, what you want to see is this a match to a deposit, right? Because what happens is that if you open up and you want to make sure that the date is correct, and if you have doubt, doubts that this is actually what you think it is, you want to make sure you click on the deposit and it's going to open up that transaction. It's going to show exactly uh, what invoices are included on that payment. As I mentioned to you, see there's multiple payments because we sent to undeposited funds and then we recorded the payment. We're going to go through the process so you can understand. But anyhow, this is multiple payments and the total amount adds up to exactly what happened in the bank, right? So with that being said, we can match. We know that this is cor correct. This is actually a check that was written. When you write a check from QuickBooks or you record an expense because you're sending 
you're sending your um, receipts to QuickBooks, which is the right way to do, you need to make sure that you match it to that expense uh, when it hits the account, right? So one example that could not match is that maybe you you, have, you went to a restaurant with your client and, um, and and then you got your receipt, but you didn't include the tips when you when you submit that receipt. So it wouldn't match to whatever happened in the bank. And then if you add the expense, it, you're duplicating everything. So you want to make sure that, yes, you need to send your invoice. Yes, you need to um, uh, send your receipts. But you want to make sure that it all matches to whatever happened in the bank. So let's uh, give you an example. So we talk about, you know, uh, the whole process and how how it works. So we have two transactions here, Books by Betsy and A Rental. And I created sales receipt for those transactions by clicking on the plus new sales receipt. Now, another question is, when do I, when should I use sales receipts? When should I use invoice? Invoice is when you need to receive the payment from the client. Sales receipt is when you are ready to receive the payment. You're just recording that the client already paid. Okay, so recording a sales receipt. And let's suppose, you know, you put the name of the client, uh, the product, and the amount, and you want to send to undeposited funds. See that? Undeposited funds. Because if you send to the bank account, Let's suppose I send it to the checking. So I'm, I'm just going to, let me look. What, um, books by Betsy. Okay, and that's for, I'm going to enter March 17th. And I'm just going to select any service design. Uh, it should be $55. So I gave her a discount, All right? I can even put, uh, there's no discount here. So I'm just gonna put the rate here as 55. This is a sample account, so, <laughs> right? So, and here I am sending to checking. See, not, should be sending to undeposited funds, but I send it to checking. So I send it to the client or just save and close here without sending to the client. Oh, oh yes, I'm sorry, one more thing. Remember what I said I was going to do. I will write this for a different amount than what actually happened in the bank because that's that's what a lot of my clients do, right? 55.50 and there you go, there's no, uh, there is no uh, match in here, and let's suppose that I am here. I, w I didn't see that there is a match, and I I'm just going to put this as sales. I'm going to add this. So remember, I recorded the payment going straight into the bank account, and then I didn't see the match. I just recorded that as sales, right? So if I go to bank register, um you will see that there is two transactions here for the same date one for 55.50 without the two two little green uh, boxes what it means is that this was manually entered and the second one came from banking i i just entered through banking right so i have a duplication here and this happens a lot this happens a lot because a lot of the my clients, they don't understand that, you know, if you send it straight to the bank and you're not matching to whatever happened in the bank, you're duplicating all your income. So, therefore, not only you don't know how much money you're actually making, but uh, the worst of all is that you're paying more taxes than uh, what you should be paying. So, that's a no-no, right? Um, so you want to make sure you know exactly where you are. We talk a lot about point of reference, knowing your point of reference so that you know where to aim for, what you aim for, where you want to go and uh, design your route and how to get there. So anyhow, so this is why we do not record a payment to the bank. 
even if it was exact the exact amount there is a possibility that you're not matching it and I have clients that actually create that invoice or that sales payment after the fact after the money was actually deposited there's no match and um, it was just recorded as twice as sales right so uh, we're gonna fix that and actually I'm gonna delete that because I already recorded two sales receipt and I sent it to the um, bank deposit so it's right here but I recorded for a different amount because this way it wouldn't it wouldn't show as a match in the bank but I'm gonna fix it now so <laughs> see that when you click on to get to the undeposited funds to that transitory account that we talk about you want to click on the left hand side plus new and then bank deposit okay so this is where it's all going to be just sitting over here for you to record the deposit so I know that this amount is incorrect so before I record the deposit I need to fix it if you click on the blue a rental it's gonna open up that sales receipt and just from here I can fix it now if it if this was not a sales receipt if this was an invoice the process is a little different there's more steps to it and I'm gonna create it for you very quickly I'm gonna delete this one and create it as an invoice so you can see the difference okay so with the invoice with the sales receipt you only create the sales receipt in your recording the payment with the uh, receipt to the customer with the invoice you're gonna create the invoice send to the client that is, let me verify, $200 is the A rental. A rental, there it is. The date is, I was in the, yeah, it's today, <laughs> today's date. Okay, for the 15th of February. Okay, we are going to put a do on receipt. Select any kind of service design, uh, but I'm, I'm just gonna put it, it's $200, right? So I am recording this invoice for the 15th. Send it as uh, save and save, save and send for those of you sending it. I'm just gonna do save and close. Okay, so I created that invoice. The next step for you is to record the payment. There's several ways to do that. One way is to click on the plus new, receive payment. I put a rental here. Oh. And it's going to auto populate with any outstanding invoice. I'm going to select that, select the date, and send it to uh, undeposited fund. Oh, I'm sorry. We are going to create that invoice incorrectly, remember? Because we don't want this to match so we can see what happens when there is any kind of errors okay so recorded for 201 and um and now we're going to receive the payment plus new receive payment or the other way is to go into uh sales and invoices and make the payment from there uh and then or you can go to customer and I'm gonna put a rental enter here so there's several ways that's my point several ways for you to get to where you need to get okay so and a rental 201 is incorrect but I didn't get that I just recorded the payment uh, the date is correct here I'm sending to um, I'm sending straight to the checking account save and close so I just want to show you the way not to do it okay so do not send it to the bank account you got to send it to undeposited funds and make sure that you correct the amount so you can match here so there's no match here and let's suppose that I just recorded a sales and I duplicated my income right how do I fix that so I'm gonna go to bank register um, I can actually go straight from the bank register I can go into this transaction 
and I know it's incorrect. But, and once again, you want to take a look and look. We see two transactions, same date, but slightly different amount, same client. We know it's a duplicated, a duplication. So the first thing you need to, to do is to go into that payment and then you go into the invoice. Different ways to get to the invoice, but you need to fix the invoice first. So we're going to fix the invoice. We're going to show that it's actually $200. We're going to save and close. This is the invoice that I'm correcting. Okay. And then I'm going to go to the payment. Because the payment is still recorded as 201. So if I go into the bank register, I click here. This is the payment. Because it was recorded straight into the checking account. That's why it shows in my checking account. And it shows the sale. I'm going to change that to undeposited funds. Because that's the right workflow. Um, and I am going to the plus new bank deposit. And I have those deposits here. Now I'm ready to record it correctly. And by the way, this is not a rental. This is Books by Betsy. So if I click here, I can fix it. And click on the blue, put the name of the client. And now I have the right one. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the plus new bank deposit, select the transaction and the date. Oh, didn't correct the payment yet, remember. So let's correct that payment. We can't record the deposit without correcting the payment. See the amount received here? I fixed it over here, but I didn't fix over here. So still incorrect. So now it shows $200. Plus new bank deposit. Oh, now it works as $200. Click here, uh, select the transaction, the date, the checking account is correct. Now I record the payment being deposited into the bank. I'm gonna do a save new. I'm gonna do the second one, books by Betsy, checking. Now this is March 17th, that's the future date. <laughs> so this is a sample account. And we're gonna ignore those two because this is, like I said, this is just a sample account. It has different items that we're not gonna use. Okay, we're gonna save and close. And now I'm going to banking. This is the right process. And sure enough, if I refresh this, okay, where's my transaction? <laughs> okay, oh, we added, remember we added. Okay, we already added. So let's go to the bank register. I'm gonna show one more tip. So we see that there's the two transactions. We already added that sale. How to fix that? So that's a duplication. I click on the one with the green flag. We have a video on that, by the way. And right from here, I can go into this transaction. All right. And I'm going to unmatch. Click on the left-hand side, top left-hand side, uh, where it says one online banking match, unmatch. When I unmatch, I'm actually bringing it back to for review and I'm going to click on more and delete. I'm deleting this part here, not these two. And, and don't worry about it. I'm not deleting the transaction itself because I already brought it back from the bank so we can match it to these two transactions. Same thing here. So we're fixing that duplication that we created on purpose. Some, some of you may be creating that without knowing, but this is how you fix it. So we're going back into uh, the plus new. Now we already recorded the deposit, so back to the banking. And now we see the match, and we can go ahead and add that. Okay. So this is my favorite thing to do. You want to make me happy? I see those little green flags. I see that everything is correct. Bill payment. Oh, that is such a happy day. I am so excited. <laughs> now, keep in mind, you do not want to match to a payment here. When it's deposit, you need to make sure that um, you go into the payment right from here. 
you send it to undeposited funds and you do the proper workflow. And like I said, there is a reason for that. So when I send it over here, I'm going to select this transaction into undeposited, uh, from undeposited funds into the checking account. Now I have a proper match. And when I do that and I go to categorize, you see that those transactions are all matched. If you actually just match your payment, it will be saying added. And if you don't match to anything, it's, it's just going to be added in here. And that's a flag that there is something wrong and that you need to fix it, okay? All right, this is it. Hopefully this was useful. Okay, all right, so as I always mention, the importance of keeping your books accurate is not just for your CPA at the end of the year so you can file your taxes. The main reason here is that you have your books up to date for your own information so you can run your business more efficiently, uh, so you can know how to grow. Uh, a lot of times, you know, I have clients that have been walking in the dark for years. And what happens is that they don't have the necessary tools to grow their business because they don't know, number one, they don't know how much money they're actually making. Or even worse, they don't know how much they're actually keeping <laughs> and what they need to do in order to, you know, um, reach their, 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 their goal. So um, I hope this video was useful. If you find it useful, please give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel so you can receive those updates weekly. <laughs> Share with your coworkers, with your friends, with your business partners, whoever, so that we can spread the news and help as many people as we can possibly help. If you need more help, if you, if you, if you find yourself kind of trapped, not knowing what to do next, and you need to get some catching up or a one-on-one -on -one, uh, tutorial, we do offer that. So feel free to contact us uh, with the information down below and we'll be able to help you uh, either catch up on your books or ongoing bookkeeping so you can focus on your business or um, just some tutorial how to do things so you can get things done right. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for watching and spending this time with me I hope to see you again next week, and until next time, keep on smiling.